Let's see if it works. Oh, it does. Any questions? <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not very good at... Sorry? Where's the hat from? Made it. Actually, I didn't make it. I, it's an old hat. I dyed it and I made it. Yeah, it served me for years, this one. Uh, I made the other one that's on the cover. Um, I'm not very good at doing 15 minutes. Um, not at all. Where are we here? Just let me... Okay. I tried to make a list to see what, what I'll show you. And then I went to an old list of a, a long lecture. This is a 15, not 15 minutes, but 15 hours lecture. Uh, I called it What's and Ifs, because what we do is just thinking, what if we do that? What if we try that? And basically, it's all about satisfying curiosity and avoiding boredom. There's nothing else. Um, I have to come clean. I don't know how many of you read. Do you read The Wire, Wired magazine? You do? Yes. Well, they, uh, they said, it said there in, some, in big letters that I invented the iPad 11 years ago, and that was tweeted like crazy. I have to come clean. I didn't invent the iPad. But what we did, we did something better than the iPad. Uh, before the iPad, uh, for LG, this is now, um, this will find it. Yeah. Um, we did something that uh, was about a little tablet you hold in your hand and it's connected to the world, you don't need anything else, this is it. Uh, LG, that commissioned me to work for them, sadly didn't understand what I want from them. What do you want? And I explained to them that they operate, it will be operating, operated mainly by the thumbs, because you hold it like that, and why don't we make it waterproof, and etc., uh, etc., et why don't we make... This was, when I see this movie that we did uh, 11 years ago, this is mocking me, it's mocking me and my iPad now. And because it didn't have any holes in it, you can take it to the bath. And it's charged, uh, we used, it charged by induction. And this was pre-apps and pre-everything. Uh, I read, I read uh, Steve Jobs' biography, and good four years after this, he's really excited, quite rightly, about putting the, the keyboard on the, on the tablet which, I mean, we didn't think it was such a great idea because it was no-brainer to do, you know, it's obvious. So, um, I can skin. What happened here? Bloody iPads. That's the charging pad. Uh, ah, we also gave it a name, called it VU, and, and the logo had to do with the thumb movement. Uh, we worked on it for one year, and we had two people from LG spying on us in our office. Um, I wanted to do the commercial uh, in a modern place, and this is, and, and Richard Rogers kindly let us use the house he designed for his parents to do the filming. Anyway, I'm so glad. Sorry? Are the pictures stuck? Bloody iPads again. Okay, so you won't hear what this guy says. This is, a, he was the design manager of, of LG and I met him 10 years later and asked him, why didn't we do it? And his answer was very honest. We were stupid, you showed us the future and we didn't see it. And I'm very grateful because I wouldn't do all the things that I did 
if this one worked, then I would not do, what wouldn't I do? Hang on. Are we on? Is it? Let's see, let's see where the roulette will take us now. Um, this is like a fruit machine. Um, oh, that's good, ping pong. I mean, this is a good example, this ping pong table, of uh, showing why it's worth not to be good playing by the rules. Uh, I'm not very good, I'm not a very good ping pong player, but I'm one of the best ping pong players in the world on my table. <laughs> uh, I once lost to the British champion 21-4. I'm very proud of my four points because he played to let me win and I played to kill him. But then, <laughs> so do we have to start again? Um, anyway, so uh, I thought the what if there was, like what if we do a ping pong table that's not flat but it has a belly. That means it would slow the game down because you can, you can work it out yourself. You're all scientists. You look like scientists. Uh, and uh, it, it's changed the game. It slows. Sorry? We have everything we need. Uh, it's, it, uh, once, you, once you play this table, you don't want to play any other table, except if it's against me. Uh, Anyway, so that, the first, that was the first series and ex experiment. This is still in the studio. But after that, uh, we made uh, the, the sort of, uh, the better version of it, the more sculptural version. Um, and this was shown at the Royal Academy summer show a few, like, few years ago. And the best thing was when Sir Anthony Caro, uh, the late Saint An uh, uh, Anthony Caro, came to the opening, and he goes, walks around it, and then he tells me, "This is a wonderful sculpture." Thank you, Sir Anthony. And then he said, "He said, want to tell me a secret? You should try and play ping pong on it." <laughs> and that was for me the biggest compliment that uh, it looks at. A, some sports equipment, and all you can see is the sculpture. Um, anyway, that's, if you want to see people. This is Francesco Clemente. We had a, a painter that we had a joint show where I did the, the ping pong, and we are both ping pong fans. Um, Stop. I think I know. It was, yeah, I was asked to do, this is another sports equipment. I was asked to do a bicycle for the Elton John AIDS Fund. Uh, so what if, what if you do a bicycle without wheels? What if you only have the suspension? So the wheels are, are made of, the suspension is made of, of uh, tempered steel. Uh, a material that I played with uh, quite a lot before. Uh, we just made the drawing and made it. There were no prototypes, nothing. This was it. And it was published for the campaign of, of, the, of the fund. And it went viral on the internet. Yes, but can you write it? Um, let's see. This is the roundhouse very near my studio. This is Marcus that worked on it.
You can definitely carry it, you can see that. So it's like... is going to the studio. Actually, the hero of this film could be Marcus, but it's Paul from the studio that runs after him with his uh, iPhone. And that's, that's the studio that is so... So after, you know something, every time I give a, a talk and I show this, this is where uh, people are conditioned to clap. I don't know, it's just very strange for me. Anyway, uh, I, w I like being jealous of things. You know, I saw this in a vintage shop in Hong Kong, this tool, and it had, you know, it, it bounces up and down and sideways. And the first question is, why didn't I think about that? And it's like, ooh. So jealousy, I thought boredom is the mother of creativity, but jealousy could be the father. <laughs> so I went home and I did something else, which is uh, same idea of the bicycle. Let's have just the suspension without the frame uh, this is so last century, this one. This is the new thing, no structure, just the suspension. Anyway, this is just a, a spin-off uh, from the bicycle. Um, I th think I know where it's taking us. Um, we did I think the museum is, yes, the museum is coming. We did the design museum uh, in a city outside Tel Aviv called, called Holon. Um, they wanted, it, the brief was, can you do us a museum that will be very proud to put an apostate stamp? Uh, every little city is jealous of Bilbao. They think that if you only have something like Bilbao, we'll be on the map. I have to say it did, it did work for them. Um, I, I'll, hang on, let me. Let's... What does this red mean? That I'm out of time? <laughs> no, because if it, I mean, I, I, I don't mind. Anyway, um, this is the, the first rendering we did, and then it was done in Corten in different. The, it's, a, it's a museum without a single column, so it's not just a pretty face. The envelope gives it the, uh, um, the look. It, it contains white cube galleries and circulation is inside and outside. Uh, because it, you know, this is a big belly there that had to be plastered in a day, so I, I'm very fond of this footage, but I'll cut it out because the da 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 da. Anyway, um, it is, this is about, uh, a month before the opening, and it is a public building, and, and it was inevitable that the rabbis of the city will come and look for a place to put their um, mezuzah, which is sort of a little, call it what you want, I was going to say pagan or whatever, other people won't like it. Um, and I was alarmed. I said to them, look, if you put this thing that you put on thresholds in this museum, you're spoiling the concept of the museum. In this museum, there isn't a threshold. There isn't a place that you know, now I'm in. I was out before. And uh, the rabbi didn't even reply to me, but he, he looked at his minions. They said, he's right. And they walked away. 
and my biggest architectural achievement. It's the only public building in this country that got an exemption from, <laughs> from that. So, ah, uh, not a stamp yet, but you know when the Rolling Stones go places, uh, every place they go, if they go to Paris, they'll use the Eiffel Tower and make a tongue out of it for the posters and the t-shirts. Here, they went to Tel Aviv and they did this. Little did they know that it's not Tel Aviv, it's another it's a different city, but it's near enough. Uh, EasyJet made the same mistake for the 15th anniversary. They, uh, you know, again, Paris, Eiffel Tower, uh, London taxi, nothing interesting about Cyprus, so they used the map. <laughs> and and uh, Tel Aviv, again, the wrong city. But we'll forgive them. I do. <coughs> right. I owe this. This. Uh, is it flushing? Does it mean? What does it mean? Okay. I tell you what. I'll go until the boss tells stop. <laughs> then I'll. Okay. I owe this museum that was a, a great success for them and. I owe them a, a, an exhibition that I kept delaying and kept delaying. Uh, uh, for me, the museum was enough. I didn't want to do another retrospective there because I was just recovering from the MoMA, the Barbican, the Pompidou. I didn't. So I had the idea while I was uh, working on squashing some sculpture in the Polytechnic of Milan, uh, why don't I? to an exhibition that's, uh, that takes three-dimensional objects, like s sculptures, flatten them to make paintings out of them. Uh, I'll take something that's perfectly functional and turn it to something that's totally unfunctional. The exhibition was called In Reverse, so I used to bring some toys to, to the... Uh, the place where I worked in Milan. I'll speed it up. You see, da -da 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 -da. okay. Um, anyway, does does uh, same thing happens here, but I won't show it to you. And the thing about these toys, they are model. They're not toys. They're models of uh, Fiat 500. The thing about it is that. You squash it, it becomes so seductive, so wonderful and beautiful. It's not, it's still a car, it's, it's like, what is it, like Mickey Mouse running into a wall. Get the, um, and I thought I'll do an exhibition of them, real, real size. I mean, this, this, is a, this is fake, this is a Photoshop toy, look like a real size. Then we had the problem of what do we do with, with real cars and the guy that runs the studio where we work in Italy, Roberto, didn't want to go to the Milan Polytechnic, we'll do it a la casa, he says. And I said, how, how will you do it, Roberto, like this? And he went white because he already built this thing here. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see it when I did it, I mean, I was just mocking him. That, was, that didn't, wor didn't work very well. It didn't work very well at all because it wasn't flat enough. And, you know, we tried everything, and also, I'll save time. Then, without, <laughs> without telling me, he took that car, and... <laughs> he came to the studio from Milan, and he told me about this, but he left, <laughs> he left the CD in his hotel and said, but what do you take the pictures on your telephone? Yeah, give me the telephone. And Michael was here, just uh, uh, stole it. I didn't want to do it like that, because this is, this is cruel. This is... So I went to my old garage. Uh, there's also this thing that in Italy you're not allowed to get a car off the road unless you hand it to a, an official's unless you bribe some scrap metal dealer. I went to the Proietti garage in Islington, near, near Pentonville prison. They looked after my Fiat 500 for 
35 years. I told them what I wanted to do. They had lots of them, as you can see. And they started crying. You know, they live for Fiat 500. And, what, and I said, look, I'm not going to destroy them. I'm going to immortalize them like pressed flowers. And that gave them the name. They joined me, and they were amazing collaborators. They prepared. I remember washing, to giving each car a wash before we loaded them and took them to Groningen, to a place in Holland, a place shipbuilders that have big presses. And after half a year of research, where can we do this? Almost desperate, we managed to do um, nine pressing from six o'clock in the morning to two o'clock. All the people that you see there, all engineers, they're white color. This was the weekend, and they're all happy to join me and Michael. Uh, and, you know, there's the yellow one. I can speed it up, so because anyway uh, there's the blue one I won't show you that, and that's the show I mean that's the yellow the white the blue doo -doo. ah Fiat kindly gave me the wooden buck of the original car that was uh, crafted by amazing people uh, under Dante Giacosa, who is the uh, designer of this and a legend in Italy. This piece is amazing. The problem with this, having this piece in your own show is you don't want the most beautiful piece in the show to be by someone else. <laughs> so uh, I had to reply, and this is, this is, this is, this is our answer to, to Dante Giacosa. We call it Maids of Road. We call it Rodi Giacosa the piece, and uh, it took six people, teams of two, six months to do it. Incredible people. Th this is the B-side. The B-side is as beautiful as the outside, um, because all the welds are not prescribed by me, but it's the flow of the artisans. Um, now, the bonus was that the, the tool for making it, I can go. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, okay, fine. That, I mean, if you want to see more. <laughs> <laughs>